Hello everybody, I'm Lily, founder of Lilo. Thank you so much for joining us on our third episode on food textures and food rejection brought to you by Mothercare and Lilo. I have with me today Katie Lower Switzer, a very experienced pediatric dietitian. Hello everybody, my name is Kathy. I'm a dietitian from the UK. Um, I trained in the UK and I worked there for 13 years in the NHS, um, predominantly at big children's hospitals. I moved to Singapore two years ago um, and I've been working in clinics here in Singapore and I've now, in the last two months, set up Kids Nutrition Singapore to help more of you out there with your children's nutrition and, and be there for you as a support with that. And in our third episode, we would like Katie to share with us more about baby food textures as well as food rejection. So Katie, can we know uh, about more about the transition between textures or baby weaning? Yeah, we've got some examples here today. Um, and when you get started, I would aim definitely for a smooth puree, almost like the consistency of, say, pumpkin soup. So there's no lumps. There's a nice, smooth, soft puree. And again, allow mess. Allow the baby to touch it. Allow them to get it on their hands and their face. And I'd use a shallow, soft, narrow spoon as well for the spooning. They could even hold a spoon in their hand as well as you're using it. So just allow mess with the pumpkin. Very, very smooth, consistent. This can be broccoli, pumpkin, sweet potato, carrot. Yeah, so when you make it, add a little bit more water to it so you get that nice soupy-like consistency. That's around six months. I'd say within the first month, maybe two weeks later, depending on your baby's development and your develop if are they development too ready, you can move on to a more mashed texture. So you don't need to be putting food through the blender so much. So you can mash potato, sweet potato, pumpkin, um, even even if you've got some salmon that you've you've mashed up. So you can use a more mashable consistency. So you can see here this hasn't gone through a blender. It's a mashable texture. And this can be around I'd say six and a half, seven months. You can move on to the more mashed textures. Even bananas are another good one, just being able to mash them up. Um, coming up seven months to eight months, you can, depending on again, depending on your baby, are they enjoying the food, are they moving through the textures, you can move on to a more grainy like texture. So adding some quinoa into the mash, adding some couscous into the mash. So you can see here there's a more grainy like consistency. It's all still very small or very manageable in the baby's mouth, but it's, it's a more grainy consistency. So around seven, eight, maybe eight to nine months, depending on your baby's readiness. But I would say keep moving through the textures. And if you try it and there's a real dislike or rejection, maybe leave it a week and then try it again. But don't give up completely. It's just a new texture. And again, like I keep saying, allow them to explore the food with their hands. Let them make a mess so they can feel that new texture on their hands first before it's in their mouth. And that's, you know, this is a historical way of babies um, discovering what's safe for them to put in their mouth. And if they're able to touch the food, feel it, smell it first, they're more likely to accept it when put in their mouth. So around nine to 12 months, they should be coming onto um, the more family foods, the more family textures. And I would just, you know, these kind of, this is butternut squash, so chopped up food, but just make sure those chunks are nice and soft. So when the baby puts them in the mouth, you can see it's just soft and it will, it will just integrate into the baby's mouth. But there's no reason why that in that display can't be can't be put on the baby's plate. So they've moved through from a smooth puree to a mash to a grainy texture, two small lumps that are soft enough for the baby to put in their mouth. And there's no reason why you're on the grainy texture to use things like mince, so minced beef, or in the mash texture to mash up fish or salmon, so it's a mashable taste. So you can add in protein foods as well as your vegetables and your fruit to these foods as well. So you need to get those protein foods in from, I'd say, around six months, six and a half months, to make sure the baby's getting those that iron into their diet as well. Great. Finger foods. So finger foods, if we go all the way back to six months again, I would say adding the finger foods out in from the very beginning. So safe finger foods are the length and probably the width just bigger than an adult finger. So things like your roasted courgette, your roasted, but just make sure when I do this, you can see that's just gonna disintegrate in the baby's mouth. Right. But just make sure the baby can clutch onto it so it's long enough, so it's long, long, length of my finger, maybe two of my fingers together, so it's not just gonna fall apart. Things like papaya, courgette, so this is papaya, you see the top of it, it's nice and soft and it will just mush into the baby's mouth. The other one that's really good is broccoli and cauliflower. So if you boil this long enough, the leaves on the top just come away into the baby's mouth, but they've got a good, you see when I'm doing that, they're just falling away so the baby can munch on it while they've got a good grasp of the bottom half of the broccoli. So if you boil the broccoli long enough, it's soft enough. And sweet potato, again, boil that and just so the top comes away. You can 
can see if the baby's munching on it without teeth, that's just going to fall away from them. But I would get these in right from the start. So do your puree for a few days, maybe even a week, and then start allowing to have the finger foods on their plate. Make sure they're safe so there's no small, round, hard cherry tomatoes or grapes, but they're safe, they can grasp hold of them. They're the length and the width of an adult finger and they're soft enough to disintegrate in your baby's mouth. Great. Thank you so much for sharing this very important information as well. So Katie, when do we know when is the baby ready to transit to the next stage? Uh, good question and every baby is going to be slightly different um, and I think it's about exposure to the new food. It's allowing mess, it's allowing exploration of the foods that they're offered. So offer them the foods let them touch them, let them make their choice whether they put those new foods in their mouth and you will be able to tell. So a lot of babies around six months of age are going to be picking things up like the finger foods we just talked about and putting them to their mouth and if they're soft enough and if they're you know, able to grasp them, they're going to be putting those in their mouth. But I would allow on their tray table, on their high chair, a little bit of puree food and a couple of finger foods and let them make a little bit of a choice about what they put in their mouth and you'll be able to see whether they're ready to move on to the next texture from that, so are they putting these more finger foods, harder foods in their mouth and chewing them? If in a week or so that you've been doing well with your purees, you've added in maybe another meal, so they're having two meals a day, I'd move on to a more mashable texture. And you'll be able you'll be able to tell just by trying, I think. So I wouldn't always necessarily wait until a particular age. I would tune into your baby's cues, how your baby how is your baby doing? With that eating, are they being offered a little bit of a choice with finger foods and purees? Are they enjoying it? And if so, move on to that next that next check, texture. And if you move on and there's some, you know, there's lots of gagging or there's pushing away, just take a step back and the next time go back to their smoother puree and try again in a week or two weeks again. So there's no harm in trying and pulling back and taking a step back and then trying again. But don't delay, 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 delay because you miss some very important windows for them to move on to new textures. That's very good information as well yeah what do we do if um, let's say the babies keep on rejecting food yeah and, and we are seeing this um, more and more at the moment I think what what we should do as parents is try and take um, a sit back and look at the bigger picture so what's happening in the meal time is the baby getting quite stressed never ever force feed a baby so although there's the importance about the nutrients um, and about the oromotor skill development I think what's really important is this time is enjoyable and the baby is enjoying the experience of eating and the meal time. Maybe not just the eating, but maybe being part of a family meal time, maybe sitting in the high chair, talking to mum, spending that quality time with mum. So I think, or dad, or auntie, you know, whoever it might be, that time has got to be enjoyable. And I think taking um, a, sit, a sit back and having a look at what you're doing at meal times, so why are they rejecting the food? Is somebody wiping their face every five minutes? And I would always stick with a one wipe rule. Wipe their face at the very end, wipe their hands at the very end, but not every five minutes through the meal. So if you're doing that, maybe think about that again and think, okay, let's try and let the baby have some freedom. Let's not be in their face all the time. Is the baby comfortable in the chair they're sitting in? Is it difficult to get the baby to the table? Are they upset already? And if, and if, and if you are coming across any of these boundaries, then get help early so that you don't have an angry or a, a distressed meal time or a distressed child at meal times every meal time. Also think about the timing of the meal. Have they just had a milk feed or have they had too, too much water to drink? So never give a baby lots of fluid before they have a meal. And if they have, maybe have a think about that. So I think it's, first of all, sit back and have a look at your picture. Have a think about the things we've talked about. And if there's any of those things that are going on, maybe try and change that. If you're still having problems, if your baby is still upset or doesn't want to get to the mealtimes, do seek help. Don't let it go on and on and on because then it becomes a stressful time and you get aversive behaviours and you can get ongoing food issues and food, food difficulties or aversive behaviour, I would say, is probably the one you want to look out for. So do get help if you're worried. Mother's instinct is always, is always right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and another question would be, what are some of the food to feed our babies to promote weight gain? Yeah, so I think, have a look at the variety of foods you've got in there. Have you got foods from all the different food groups? Are you getting in your family meals? So have you got some fruits and vegetables? Have you got your um, carbohydrate foods, your whole grains, sweet potatoes, quinoa, couscous? These are your energy containing foods. Have you got protein in there? Your fish, your meat, your egg, your tofu, your nut butters? 
Um, have you got some dairy in there? So having a look at the different food groups, have, are, they, are you including all these food groups? And by the time they get to eight, nine months, they should really be having a variety of these food groups. And you're aiming by the time they're 12 months to be eating the family foods and including this huge variety of foods. So certain foods, if your baby is struggling to get this variety and is struggling to gain weight, you can concentrate on, yes, the more high energy foods. Things like avocado are really good. Nut butters, so your smooth nut butters. So we say no whole nuts from a choking risk before the age of five, but nut butters are a brilliant way to add to smoothies, to add to purees. Um, things like your protein, so your oily fish. Have they got some mashable oily fish in there? This is a really good source of fat. Your omega-3 fats, which are your essential fatty acids, okay, key for brain development and also immunity. So get those in there where you can. Um, things like your carbohydrate foods, so your sweet potato, your potatoes, um, you can add in a little bit of olive oil or flaxseed oil into their diet or even a very small amount of um, seeds and nuts as well in the morning time. So think about your carbohydrates, your protein foods and your fats, your good fats, so olive oils, avocado, nut butters, things like this will help promote weight gain in children that are struggling. Very, very good tips. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. So this brings us to our third episode of Food Textures and Food Rejection. Thank you so much, Katie, for sharing with us on your tips and knowledge. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.